And good afternoon. Welcome to another exotic PC video review. And today we are reviewing the new Razorblade laptop. Uh, this is the second installment of Razorblade's first ever laptop. There was the original Razorblade, and now there's this new Razorblade. And we're pretty excited to bring you this review today. There's been a lot of hype and a lot of talk about this system. Uh, we started carrying these about a month ago, and we're finally getting around to uh, giving you a video review, giving you our unbiased opinion about this system, what we think of it overall. Uh, to start, we'll just talk about what's uh, all going to be in this video review. The first thing we're going to do is go over uh, unboxing it, showing you how it's going to arrive at your door, uh, all the things inside the package when it arrives, etc., etc. Uh, the system specs will be, you know, giving you a breakdown of what all comes on this laptop, and then comparing it to the previous Razorblade laptop. Uh, exterior finish, uh, the look of it, what it's made out of. We'll do a size and weight comparison. Uh, we'll be comparing this laptop to other comparable laptops on the market right now. Uh, we'll go over the screen, 17.3 uh, inch full HD matte screen. We'll break that down for you here as well. Uh, the ports, uh, what ports are actually included on this system. Uh, we'll also go over the keyboard and the point device, which is probably the most talked about feature on this laptop. Uh, we'll do a sound and audio analysis. We'll just let you listen to some music and, and some other things, let you see what the sound is like on this, because actually the sound on this is quite phenomenal from uh, what I've seen in other comparable laptops of this size. Uh, we'll do some benchmarks with the GPU, and then we'll show you some thermal images, show you the heat, the heat output on this, and then lastly, uh, we'll sort of break down our pros and cons lists, uh, the things we really like about the system, uh, the things that we think Razer could improve on for the third installment if and when they uh, you know, make a third version of this Razer Blade laptop. So thank you for joining us today and we will go ahead and get started and we will unbox this laptop. Okay, the first thing uh, we're going to do is, is unbox this new Razer Blade laptop. Opening it up here, laptops in the middle, you can see they uh, did some extra cushioning, uh, styrofoam padding around the outside on the corners and I think that's really important. Uh, because if FedEx or UPS or somebody's going to drop it, it's most likely going to hit on a corner. So that little extra protection in there is nice. Pulling it out, take these foam cushions off the corners here. And opening it up, there's a little razor blade insignia there on the front. There's also uh, some more cushioning inside the lid. Uh, this is nice, I've never seen this before either. Pulling out the laptop, nice little strap they attach to the box here to lift it out. And your laptop is here inside a protective plastic sheet. Go ahead and pull this out. Talk about a couple other things here in the case. Uh, you do get your basic uh, packet. Uh, this has some utility discs in it. There's also a nice little uh, cleaning cloth in there, some other things. Take a look in here when you get it. Uh, your AC adapter, we'll also get into this more later. Uh, it's 120 watt AC adapter. This is about the smallest 120 watt AC adapter I've ever seen. And all of your, um, your power cord and everything is located in here. So we'll pull that out, slide this out of the way. And voila. Uh, your new razor blade laptop. Uh, a couple of things to note here. Uh, there is plastic covering up the screen. Uh, most manufacturers do this. It's nice that they do this. Uh, we'll go ahead and pull this off here, hopefully. A little piece of tape at the top. There we go. And also, uh, obviously one of the newest features is going to be this LCD uh, trackpad. There is going to be a little piece of plastic over this as well. Uh, we'll take that off. And voila, your new razor blade laptop. Okay, the next thing uh, we'll do is we'll break down the system specs. Uh, we'll show you those on your screen here and then we'll also show you uh, the previous razor blade laptop and how it compares. Uh, screen 17.3 inch full HD matte screen 1920 by 1080. Uh, I'm pretty sure we mentioned that in the intro to this video. Uh, very nice screen, pretty much with all gaming laptops. 
Uh, most manufacturers are going with matte screens, so it's really nice to see that they've sort of stick, stuck to that trend. Uh, CPU processor, you're going to have a third generation Ivy Bridge i7-3632 uh, quad mobile processor. Graphics card in here, uh, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660M. It does come with Optimus, so you do have that switchable integrated Intel 4000 graphics. Uh, so that's really nice if you know, you're running on battery, which we are right now, and we want to do some light tasks like uh, you know, browsing the internet, jumping on YouTube, whatever the case may be. Um, having that integrated graphics is going to give you some more extended battery life, which we'll also go over uh, later in the review. RAM, you do have 8 gigabytes, 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM. Uh, that's pretty standard uh, for RAM on a system of this size. Uh, if you get in some of the MSIs that are 17.3 inch or some of the ASUS's that are 17.3 inch, you are going to get uh, 12 gigabyte or even 16 gigabyte. Uh, but 8 is, uh, you know, optimal. You can definitely do some gaming on this system with 8 gigabytes of RAM. And later in the video, we'll actually show you some uh, Battlefield 3 gameplay. Uh, so you can see what the performance is like on that game on this system. Uh, hard drive, you do have a 500 gigabyte, 7200 RPM hard drive. You do have a 64 gigabyte SATA 3 caching SSD in there. Uh, it's sort of hybrid, so you can, uh, you know, it's going to give you a little bit added more performance versus just having a, a standard mechanical hard drive in there. Uh, lastly, the Wi Fi in this is going to be an Intel Centrino uh, 6235, and that also comes with uh, Bluetooth 4.0. Uh, so that's just a breakdown of the specs. Okay, just wanted to uh, briefly touch base on the exterior finish. Uh, this is going to be a matte black finish. It's a metal, it's not really a hard plastic. Um, I'm not sure if you can pick it up there. It is going to pick up a lot of fingerprints. Uh, you can definitely see my little smudges on the outside of it. You do have the Razor Blade logo here in green. Uh, you know, that's been their sort of standard company colors is a, a flat black and like a neon green. Um, and that's carried throughout the laptop overall as far as, you know, the backlit keyboard, uh, you know, the power icon at the top there. Uh, green and black color scheme. Uh, not too, too much to say about the exterior finish. Uh, you know, it's a flat black. Uh, it's a nice color. But as you can see, it's definitely going to pick up on, uh, on some fingerprints there. Okay, the next thing uh, we just wanted to go over with you is the size and weight. Um, as you can see, this system is extremely thin. Uh, this is probably one of the thinnest laptops I've seen, you know, in this class of laptop, being a 17.3 inch gaming laptop. Uh, just breaking down the size comparison, we'll show you this on your screen here. Uh, the width on this is going to be almost 17 inches wide. Uh, depth is almost 11 inches. And then thickness, this is its really, uh, its really nice feature, is that it's under an inch thick with the lid closed. Uh, you know, showing you some other systems on here, the Sega MP6370, uh, an MSI GE70, uh, an ASUS G75, and then of course the Alienware M18X, or excuse me, M17X. Uh, the reason we're showing you all those systems on there, uh, those are all 17.3 inch laptops with the same graphics card and pretty much comparable uh, CPU. I think most of these are going to have the 3630. This, however, has that 3632 uh, in there for the CPU. Uh, you know, the weight on this is going to be 6.6 .6 pounds. Uh, you know, comparing it to some of the other systems, it's not the lightest out there. You can see that MSI GE70 is slightly lighter. Uh, you know, but comparing it overall to like the Alienware M17X, uh, you know, it's 30% less in weight. And then comparing the height of this to like the G75, um, you know, that G75 VW you see on their screen there, uh, with an overall height of two inches thick, you could actually more or less stack two of these razor blade laptops on top of each other, and it's still going to be slimmer uh, than that ASUS gaming laptop. Uh, so that's just a brief breakdown of size. Uh, you know, if you're looking for portable gaming, which most people are in a laptop, this is definitely going to be one of our top choices. Um, you know, just because it is so uh, slim. Okay, the next thing uh, we're going to talk about here is a screen. Now, as we mentioned uh, in the beginning of this video review, this is a 17.3 inch Full HD matte screen. Uh, what you're seeing on your screen here is some 3D Mark 11 uh, benchmark runs, and we'll actually show you those scores um, later on in the review. 
uh, you know, going side to side, the screen isn't washing out that much. I've seen a lot of other matte screens wash out much more at this angle. So, you know, if you're sitting on the couch or something watching a movie with another person, uh, you know, the wash from side to side isn't all that bad. So the image quality uh, from side to side is actually pretty good on this laptop. Uh, coming down from top to bottom, you're not seeing a whole lot of wash uh, from the top to the bottom, uh, given you're probably not going to be using your laptop like this. Um, but this is where screens tend to perform the least best, and actually the wash from top down isn't that bad. Going the reverse, uh, hopefully we'll get another 3D Mark 11. Okay, there's one going. Coming down from the bottom to the top, you're not seeing that much wash either. Uh, it's actually performing fairly well. You can see one of our overhead lights there reflecting on the screen. Uh, you know, any screen there's going to be some reflection, but you know, compared to a glossy screen, this isn't all that bad. Uh, one thing to quickly note too, this is the farthest the screen will tilt back. Uh, hopefully you can see that there. I would say that's uh, you know, 140, 150 degrees overall angle um, on the screen as far as how far, how, excuse me, how far uh, it tilts back. Uh, so overall, the screen on this is really nice. Uh, it's good to see, you know, once again that Razer is going with the tradition of gaming laptops and going with a matte screen. Okay, the next thing uh, we're going to go over is the ports and the peripherals um, on this new Razer Blade laptop. Starting off in the front, uh, no ports in the front. As you can see right here, you do have one uh, LED status indicator light, and it is sort of uh, you know pulsating on and off. This is indicating that it's in standby mode. There is only one um, LED indicator light on this laptop. Looking at other laptops like ASUS, MSI, you're going to see four or five different uh, you know LED indicators, uh, you know showing various things, whether it's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, hard drive activity, um, etc. But on this Razer Blade, there is only one LED status indicator light. No other ports or anything uh, on the front. Uh, this is the right side here. You do have a Kensington lock jack there, uh, one exhaust vent. Back side, um, there is nothing on the back side. Uh, no ports, no exhaust vents. Everything is going to be located on the right side here. You do have a second exhaust vent, DC power input, RJ45 Ethernet, uh, HDMI, then you have three USB 3.0 ports, and then you do have a headphone microphone combo. Uh, one thing to take note that Razer has done on their laptops is they've sort of stylized these USB 3.0 ports. Um, they made these green inside. Um, that's sort of, I guess, to match the overall aesthetics of the laptop. Pretty much every other manufacturer is going to go with that, that blue color for USB 3.0s. I think the only other manufacturer that does something comparable to this is going to be Alienware. Uh, they tend to, I think, I think they make these black actually on like the M17X or M18X. Uh, so overall that's the ports. Everything is located on the left side. Um, if you're like me and you're right handed, this is very nice because I like to use an external mouse. So everything over here is freed up. Uh, however, if you're a lefty, uh, this might prove to be a disadvantage having everything located on the left side. Okay, the next thing I uh, will go over with you is the keyboard and this point device. Now as you can hopefully see the keyboard is uh, backlit with green again stylized to fit the overall theme of the laptop and we'll actually uh, kick the lights off for you here just really quick so you can see what you know the illuminating quality is like of that uh, backlit keyboard. Okay as you can obviously see we have uh, you know kicked off the lights here for you just so you can see how this uh, you know keyboard illuminates. The illuminating quality on it is very nice uh, you know, one minor disadvantage I would say is that you can't personalize it. You can't change it to like red or blue or multicolor or anything like that. Uh, you know, that's a big difference when you're looking at like MSI's or some of the Sega branded Clevos that have those color changing backlit keyboards. Uh, you know, another comparable system is that Asus G75. Those come with a backlit keyboard as well, which just comes in standard white. And that you can't really uh, personalize on your own. So, you know, it's green. Uh, the overall quality of it is very uh, illuminating. And, you know, overall it's a good uh, backlit keyboard. Okay, the next thing, I'm going to turn the lights back on for you here, uh, is we're going to go over the point device. Now, as you can see, and this is probably the most talked about feature on the Razer Blade laptop, is the LCD uh, touchpad. And it's been located where traditionally uh, numeric pads 
are located on 17.3 inch laptops and there is no uh, you know touchpad or point device where it would traditionally be located now I've been playing around with this laptop for a good two days now and even naturally I want to you know bring my hand back here uh, you know as far as you know using the trackpad and moving the mouse around so it definitely takes some getting used to uh, you know from a gaming perspective and you know Razer markets this as being like the ultimate gaming laptop the first true uh, truly built gaming laptop uh, from a gaming perspective if you do game with a trackpad and not an external uh, you know optical mouse the way your hands are set up um, it is very ideal. I personally don't use, you know, a uh, point device when I am gaming. Uh, I do use an external mouse. Um, but it's nice that, that it, it, where they have relocated it as far as, you know, if that's how you game. Another point to make out too is that since the point device is relocated over here, when you're doing things like typing, you're not going to bump that. Um, you know, it's not in the way or anything like that. So definitely a nice, uh, a nice feature. And we'll actually get into that um, here more. Okay, touching more on the trackpad. Now, uh, in order to unlock this or to start using it, you do have to set up a free account through Razer, uh, through their Synopsys 2.0. Uh, it's free to set up. They send you an email confirmation. All you need is uh, you know, your email address, set up a password, and then you can unlock this. Now, up at the top, there is uh, 10 programmable keys. Uh, these are just what came, I guess, as by default. Uh, there's a YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Gmail. Uh, you can hit... Um, I guess that was the second button there. That's going to give you uh, your traditional number pad. Uh, there's some other things like clock, if you want to just have the basic time displayed on there. Uh, this is completely programmable. Um, it's really nice in a lot of PC games. You can program these keys to do uh, a number of different things. Uh, one thing I will point out is that, say for example, I am playing Battlefield 3. I'm playing the campaign. I'm on a level and I'm not sure exactly how to beat a level. Um, I can go into YouTube. Hopefully it'll pop up here. Uh, my Wi-Fi connection might not be the greatest right now, so we'll give this a second. Okay, there it popped up. Uh, hit that one for search, and I can type in you know whatever I want to look for. Uh, Battlefield. Let's just do Battlefield Three. See what comes up uh, on YouTube. There's a bunch of different videos. You can scroll through them. Um, this is multi-touch, so you can zoom in. Uh, looks like it wasn't letting me zoom in there for whatever reason. And hopefully, I guess I have like the worst Wi-Fi connection right now. Uh, you can play videos on here. It does act as a second screen, which is really nice. Uh, you know, there's going to be a bunch of different situations where having this screen come into play is going to be uh, very nice. Uh, to exit out of it, you can see there is this little razor blade button here. You can, that'll just get you back to the main screen. Uh, one last thing I will point out too. I know we didn't get uh, too in depth with that trackpad. Um, Razer gives you this, uh, I guess it's a little uh, matte finish uh, protective overlay on your LCD screen. Go ahead and take it out and uh, you know apply it and it's definitely going to leave this glass scratch resistant um, and it's also going to make it so your fingers don't uh, stick or bind up as bad on there when you're playing around with that. So uh, that's definitely probably the key feature on this Razer Blade laptop is going to be that, that LCD touchpad. Uh, it is four point multi touch. You can zoom in, zoom out on it. Um, and then the resolution on it is going to be 480 by 800. So, you know, like we showed you there, playing a little YouTube video or whatever you need to do on there um, is going to be very nice. Okay, uh, you know, just going over a couple more quick points on the keyboard. Um, up here at the top, you do, this is going to be your power button. Um, it is LED glowing. You can see it sort of pulsating there. Uh, the keys. Uh, are very nice. It reminds me more of like a, a MacBook Pro style of keys. Uh, there's not much flex to it whatsoever. Uh, you might see a little bit of movement there. That's actually the whole laptop moving. Uh, the key response is very nice. Uh, Razer brands these as being anti-ghosting keyboard. Um, seems to work for me. Pretty nice. Uh, you know, a couple things to note on. Uh, the up and down arrow keys here. Uh, let's see if I can get this closer in here for you. Hopefully you can see those there. They've actually combined the up and down arrow keys into one key, which to me is, you know, I've never seen that before. Uh, definitely very different. Uh, you know, if you do use this in some games, this could become very awkward. Um, 
But again, you do have the, uh, you know, that added LCD pad over there, which is, you know, a truly unique feature, which we've, you know, already touched based on a couple of times. Okay, the next thing uh, we're just going to briefly show you here uh, is the audio quality on this. Now, the speakers are going to be located up here at the top. There are no speakers um, underneath this, the laptop. We're just going to play you some sample music. It comes on pretty much every laptop. Uh, we do have the speakers up at 100%, and we'll go ahead and give you a quick little play of this just so you can see what the sound quality is like. Okay, so uh, for me personally, it's not the best music in the world uh, by any means, but you know that's basically a sample song that comes on every laptop. Uh, we started showing those in our video reviews, and you know to keep consistency, we're trying to play the same song on every laptop. Uh, overall, the sound quality is very nice. Uh, there is no subwoofer or anything like that uh, underneath the system. Looking at a lot of the other 17.3 inch gaming laptops as far as like ASUS and MSI, uh, especially looking at like the MSI GT70s, which are the bigger 17.3 uh, inch laptops, those are going to have a subwoofer underneath, which is nice. Um, I'm guessing it didn't come on the system because, you know, they're trying to keep it slim and that would have added a little bit more thickness to it um, as far as, you know, having a subwoofer, a magnet, all that stuff that comes with the subwoofer. So. Uh, you know, overall sound quality on this is very nice, uh, you know, no subwoofer, but, you know, great audio overall. Okay, next uh, we'll briefly touch on uh, some benchmark scores. Now, we ran uh, 3D Mark 11. Uh, this is just a stock GPU, CPU benchmark run. Uh, again, for the GPU in this, you do have that NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660M. Uh, this does come with Optimus on here, which is really nice. Um, not sure if we mentioned earlier battery life. Uh, quick battery life test that we did. Uh, we just ran Wi-Fi, obviously unplugged, and we got uh, almost four hours of battery life just surfing the internet. Uh, you know, so hopefully that gives you just a quick little idea on battery life. Uh, you know, you could probably get through definitely a whole Blu-ray. Uh, you know, but one thing I don't think we mentioned earlier on this system is uh, there's no optical drive. So you know if you're wanting to burn CDs, play DVDs, Blu-rays, or whatever, you're definitely going to have an external device. And from my perspective, I think that cuts down on the portability of it because you do have to bring something else with you. Uh, you know, you have to bring an optical drive now with you because this system doesn't have an optical drive on it. Uh, so that's just a little uh, tidbit I threw in there. Uh, getting back to the benchmark score, again, uh, GPU 660 from NVIDIA. CPU, this does have that 3632 quad mobile that is a third gen Ivy Bridge processor. Uh, just for a basic 3D Mark 11 uh, benchmark score, we got 2,407 points. Uh, that's not bad. Again, this is a 660. Uh, one thing I will say is that you know, for a laptop at this price point at, you know, $2,400, um, I don't know if we mentioned that yet in the video, uh, but the price point on this, I think it's $2,499 actually. For a price point that high, um, I would have liked to seen a, you know, GTX 675 MX, one of those new graphics cards, or even a 680 in here. Uh, but this does have a 660. This is um, adequate for gaming. Um, however, when you get into some more intense games, like as far as Crisis 2, um, I think the required specs were just released on Crisis 3. And even for desktops on Crisis 3, I think they're even asking for a 680 on that. Uh, so once Crisis 3 comes out, we will definitely test it on multiple systems. And I would guess that, you know, this being a 660, uh, you know, if you're playing Crisis 3 multiplayer, you're not going to see uh, very high frame rates, unfortunately, depending on what your settings are uh, within that game. Uh, overall, the 3D Mark 11 score is about average. Uh, this is what we've seen with other 660s uh, paired up with third gen CPUs. Um, next thing we will actually show you is some thermal images and some heats so you can see what the heat output on this was like when we were uh, running 3D Mark 11 scores and when we were doing some gaming on it. Uh, looking at the keyboard area, 
and the uh, LCD point device, uh, you're seeing temperatures in the mid 70s. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, this was just after doing a 3D Mark 11 uh, benchmark run, so the CPU and GPU were running, you know, extremely strong, probably around 100%. Uh, temperatures are still pretty low on this system. Uh, that surprised me a little bit, uh, considering the exhaust vents that you saw earlier uh, were out the sides and weren't. Uh, you know all that big uh, but temperatures are keeping pretty cool overall uh, looking at the underside um, up at the top there is uh, two uh, intake vents and actually the temperatures on the underside are still uh, pretty low so if you had this laptop on your lap which is very common with laptops hence the name laptop uh, you know you're not going to get too much heat uh, coming down onto your knees and your thighs and, and in that area so uh, you know, that's just a little overview of the thermal temps on this new razor blade laptop. Okay, another thing, uh, I think we touched uh, basis on this at the beginning of the review, uh, but the power brick. Uh, this is a 120 watt uh, AC adapter. It is only uh, five and a quarter inches by I think two and a quarter inches, and then just 0 0.6 inches thick, uh, weighing in at 10.6 ounces. Uh, this is probably the smallest 120 watt power brick that I've ever seen. Uh, it's very nice and when you're talking about portability, uh, when you are carrying this laptop with you and then you do of course have to lug along the power brick, uh, it's nice that Razer has provided you with a very small and slim AC adapter. Okay, uh, as you can see the next thing we're going to do is uh, show you some Battlefield 3. This is just campaign play. Uh, Probably in a future video, uh, here in the very near future, we'll do some multiplayer and stuff, just so you can see, uh, you know, how well this graphics card and this laptop can handle the game. Stick together. Check your corners. What was that? Someone needs to tell the OD to blow those ammo dumps further away. Wait, Trevor. Okay, uh, then we'll zoom in on the, the frame rate just so you can see that a little bit better uh, during this scene, during the campaign. Okay, so hopefully that gave you, uh, you know, a quick little idea of, you know, what Battlefield 3 looks like doing the campaign. Uh, obviously during multiplayer you're going to see, you know, a drop in frame rate, but probably not too drastically. Uh, lastly, one thing I'll point out too, uh, the real advantage of this new Razorblade laptop is if I didn't know how to complete or beat a level on Battlefield 3, uh, I could pull up my YouTube, and then within YouTube here, I could search for a video, and then play it, learn how to beat that level, 
uh, exit out of it, and then continue on with my game. So uh, that's a real advantage of probably the most unique feature um, on this laptop. Another thing I'll point out too, uh, I really like using uh, an external optical mouse. Uh, there's no ports over here on the right side, so my mouse is plugged into the left side, which really frees me up for you know a lot of mouse movement. Uh, over there on the right side. So uh, again, hopefully that gives you a little bit of perspective of you know what some gameplay might be like on this laptop. Okay, the last thing uh, we wanted to go over with you uh, to sort of sum up our video review of the new Razorblade laptop uh, is just a list of our pros and cons. These are things that we think you know really utilize this laptop and things that we think uh, Razor could possibly improve on if they do, uh, if and when they do release a third edition of this laptop. Uh, pros list. Uh, obviously, slim design. Uh, the LCD trackpad is really nice with those 10 programmable LCD buttons. Uh, backlit keyboard, another plus, especially if you're a gamer, which this is supposed to be built for, you know, a gamer, of course. Uh, matte screen. Uh, long battery life. Uh, hopefully you caught that uh, sort of in the video there. Uh, you know, when we had uh, just were surfing the internet on Wi-Fi with battery on, uh, the graphics did switch over to that integrated Intel 4000 graphics, and so we got almost four hours of battery life. Uh, so battery life on this is good for a 17.3 inch laptop. And the last pro on there is going to be that small AC adapter. Again, that's about the smallest 120 watt AC adapter that we've ever seen. Uh, cons list isn't terrible. Uh, I, I guess our biggest con is going to be the price. The price point at this is $24.99 right now. Uh, we could see that drop. We hope to see that drop. Uh, but again, probably most of that price is attributed to uh, the LCD trackpad and then those 10 buttons there. Uh, that's probably going to be where a lot of that difference in price would be. If that wasn't there, I would expect this laptop to be, you know, $1,900, somewhere in that range. So, uh, you know, you are getting uh, what you pay for as far as, you know, quality, build quality, and then, of course, that trackpad there. Uh, another disadvantage, there's no optical drive. Um, I think a lot of that is attributed to this being such a slim laptop. Um, if they did have an optical drive bay in there, it would be a little bit thicker. Again, it's supposed to be extremely mobile. Uh, you know, if you brought an optical drive with you, that's definitely going to take away from its mobility factor. Uh, so no optical drive. Uh, the mouse pad placement, this, you know, we again said was a pro. It could also be a con. Um, if you're used to having the trackpad in the traditional location, uh, then this laptop might not be for you. Uh, no traditional uh, number pad over here. You do have that option of using the LCD pad, which hopefully you can see it there. Uh, that might not be a big disadvantage for some, but it could for others. Uh, another lastly con is going to be, um, you know, only one hard drive bay. Uh, on most 17.3 inch laptops, pretty much across any other manufacturer, we see two uh, hard drive bays, even MSATA, et cetera, et cetera. So a little bit more storage capacity would have been nice, but. Uh, overall, the pros, in our opinion, outweigh the cons. This is definitely going to be, uh, you know, a great laptop. It's very unique. Uh, we don't see any other manufacturer putting anything else out of it like this, uh, especially with the touch LCD pad, uh, even in a traditional location. Uh, so that's going to sum up our laptop video review today. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed it. Hopefully, we covered all the bases that you wanted. Uh, if there's questions that you have, definitely leave those below in the YouTube comments box and we will do our best to answer those or you can contact us directly at sales at exoticpc.com. Go to our website if you like and check out this laptop from Razer. Um, our website again is uh, www.exoticpc.com. Check it out, configure yours. Uh, definitely let us know if you have any questions. Uh, lastly, be on the lookout for some more uh, gameplay videos on this laptop. We should have those posted here shortly after this review. And that's going to do it. So thank you again for watching, and we hope to see you in the next review.